As the dispute between Russia and Ukraine continues, the Russian Defense Forces have brought out the Tupolev Tu-160M from its arsenal, leaving NATO scrambling. This deadly Russian supersonic bomber, which is also called White Swan, was debuted by the Russian defense from the Kazan Aviation's aerodrome. The capabilities of this bomber cannot be underestimated, considering what it could represent. In this video, we'll show you why this weapon strikes so much fear in the hearts of opponents. However, before we get into the details, ensure to like this video and subscribe to the channel Military Technology Updates. How dangerous is this weapon? Attempts at diplomacy on the Ukraine situation have failed, and with NATO and Russia having unresolved differences, Russia has decided to show some of its might. The supersonic bomber plane flew for half an hour at an altitude of 600 meters. To increase the shock value, the CEO of United Aircraft Corporation revealed that 80% of the aircraft's equipment has been modernized and upgraded. Even US reports have named this bomber plane among the most deadly aircraft in this age and time. Not very much is known about this supersonic bomber plane, but reports suggest that it was designed to clear enemies in remote areas. This could be with nuclear weapons or other conventional ones. In fact, there's little debate about the Tu-160M being the planet's heaviest supersonic military plane. What led Russia to unveil this weapon? No one can really tell the reason for this show of power, but it seemed to have stemmed from NATO, denying Russia any veto over Ukraine's entry into its alliance. A treaty had been signed that stated that NATO would not extend into Russia's eastern border, but Russia believes that this agreement wasn't honored and has not taken it lightly. Alexander Grushko, the former minister of Russia, disclosed that talks over Ukraine were not successful. American President Joe Biden, as well as NATO countries, have imposed sanctions on Russia since the invasion. With this continuing to affect the Russian economy and attempts at diplomacy failing, a show of force might be another way to get things done. However, it's also important to note that everything the Russians do does not have to be a response to the US or NATO. Russia has a very big nuclear infrastructure and is a bit obsessed with weaponry. It can be said that creating more advanced nuclear toys is a good way to maintain power and keep your defense strong. You also have to consider that the Russian nuclear industry provides jobs for its citizens. Hence, it might have been a planned act that just happened to coincide with the NATO issues. The Tu-160 supersonic strategic bomber is known to NATO as Blackjack, which is a bit funny considering its other nickname, the White Swan. It was given this name designated as a result of its anti-flash finishing and maneuverability. Anyways, the aircraft is a variable sweep wing missile carrier that's very fast. It was built by the Tupolev Aircraft Company in collaboration with the Kazan Gorbanov Aircraft Company. When was the first of its kind made? The first Tu-160 missile carrier was completed back in 1981, December. However, it would take another six years before it entered service with Ukrainian aviation. Since 2000, the manufacturers have had to restart production once it was delivered to the Russian Air Force. There have been as many as 36 of these aircraft built, but only 17 are available for service presently. This supersonic bomber is capable of functioning fine in any weather and time of the day. Also, it can operate perfectly regardless of the geographical latitudes. As of now, the Tu-160 missile carrier holds over 40 world records, which are a record in itself. What are the capabilities of the Tu-160 bomber? Originally a Soviet weapon, the Tu-160 is a Russian supersonic strategic aircraft capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Together with the Tu-95MS bombers, Russia's aerospace force is a force to reckon with worldwide. It was designed to take down enemy targets even in remote areas and in complex situations. The Tu-160 is one of the largest swing-wing heavy bombers in the world. 
Its airframe possesses a very distinct appearance with its fuselage and wing slowly integrated into a one-piece configuration. The structure of the airframe comprises a titanium beam with a torsion box that is completely welded. The whole airframe is completely secured using titanium. The design of the outer taped wings provides high-performance flight capabilities moving at supersonic speed. The controls on the bomber are fly-by-wire controls and equipped with a 3-strut landing gear. Also, it comes with a brake parachute and a tail wheel. As stated earlier, the TU-160 is also capable of strategically attacking targets with conventional and nuclear weapons, but it does this even in continental operation theaters. When it comes to takeoff, this supersonic bomber requires a 3,050-meter concrete runway for proper flight. Being such a big plane, it's proper that the TU-160's crew consists of an operator, a navigator pilot, and a co-pilot. This four-crew arrangement is built with 0-0 ejection seats. These seats allow crew members to eject safely across the various altitudes and airspeeds. The ejection seats also help when the plane is parked. As for the cabins and cockpit, all information is displayed on conventional electromechanical indicators as well as monitors. This was chosen for the design ahead of the cathode ray tube systems or the heads up displays. The deadly supersonic bomber also comes with a control stick to aid control while in flight. This is similar to the fighter aircraft and was chosen ahead of yokes or control wheels, which are both the traditional controls used in large transporter aircraft. Being a weapon that's built to meet up with a modern-day warfare environment, the TU-160 is highly computerized with avionic systems comprising flight control systems and an integrated aiming system with attack radar, navigation, automatic controls, and an electronic countermeasures feature. There is no stopping this weapon. When it comes to weapon use, this large Russian bomber plane can carry all weapons, be it traditional or nuclear. It also works on long-range nuclear missiles. Since it's a transport airplane, this machine is capable of carrying the KH-55MS cruise missile. Are there any variants of this supersonic bomber plane? There are quite several TU-160 variants. This includes the TU-160P, TU-160SK, TU-160M, TU-160S, TU-160R, TU-160V, and the TU-160PP. Still, the TU-160V seems to be the upgraded version here, as its fuel is different. It uses liquid hydrogen as a very interesting fuel. It can also allow for three extra long-range hypersonic missiles. With improvements here and there, the plane is solid right now. This beast is powered by a whopping four turbofan engines. Each of them can generate a thrust of 25,000 kilograms when in good shape. Also, the engines which come in two pods are installed under the aircraft's shoulder wing. While in flight, refueling is not common among military aircraft, the TU-160 has plus a fuel capacity of over 155,000 kilograms. Besides being able to fly high into the sky, the TU-160 White Swan has an endurance level of a flight of 15 hours. You should also know that its service ceiling is as high as 16,000 meters. Incredible, right? As a large plane, the Tupolev Tu-160 weighs about 110,000 kilograms, while takeoff weight reads into 275,000 kilograms at most. During combat, this deadly Russian bomber would fold its wings back and dart toward its targets at warp speed to release its missile on the enemy once in range. This is simply how large bomber aircraft generally function. No one can categorically tell how it works since it has not been used in combat since the last upgrades. Now although the nuclear bomber planes might not have mattered back in 2015, there's no telling how they might matter now. 
To be frank, the chances that Russia would use this weapon soon are slim, since we're only still talking about an invasion. Its use can only become more possible if matters really escalated. Considering the state of the world now, it is neither militarily nor politically feasible to use such a large-scale weapon. The days when two global systems would think to destroy each other rapidly are gone. Always better to reach a diplomatic conclusion than to put the lives of millions of people to death while the rest of the world watched online. Before we continue, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, Military Technology Updates. Now let's get back to the video. Have there been any upgrades made to this military aircraft? Recognizing the importance of producing something that could compete with the B-1B missile carriers in the US, Russia offered the Kazan Aircraft Production Organization a deal. They were to make, modify, and modernize Russia's 15 Tu-160 supersonic aircraft. The upgrade deal includes adding new targeting systems, an electronic suite for warfare, and upgraded cruise missiles. Initial upgrades got delivered to the Russian Air Force back in 2006. By 2008 in September, two Tu-160 bombers crossed the Atlantic for the first time. Two years later, Russia tested the weapon and were delighted to have completed a 23-hour patrol. The patrol covered about 18,000 kilometers and became a record as well. The test saw the aircrafts flying through the Pacific and Arctic Oceans from its Russian borders. After ample flight time, the bomber plane landed at the Engels base. In 2013, several bench tests were done in a bid to modernize the avionics complex for the Tu-160 missile carrier. For the upgrades to be done, the Russian Minister of Defense provided over a $100 million contract to makers Kapo and Tupolev. Both manufacturers got to work and a year later, the Tu-160 aircraft was upgraded with airborne radar and navigation equipment. The Russian Minister of Defense announced the decision to refurbish the large supersonic aircraft. After some further modification, the Tu-160M2, which is its prototype aircraft, was unveiled in 2017. However, it was until another year before the aircraft was tested. By January 2022, the Russians flew their Tu-160M aircraft after much modification and rearrangement. From the tests, we can see how modernized this strategic weapon looks. It was going to be a top next-gen supersonic missile carrier. With further integrated materials and technologies, it's going to be very difficult for enemies to detect this aircraft now, as its radar signature has been reduced. Is there any comparable weapon to it? It has been a subject of debate from weapon enthusiasts as they've struggled to decide on the best strategic heavy bomber between the Russian Tu-160 and the B-1 from the US. The B-1, or Bone, as US military personnel usually call it, is a major competition against the Tu-160. One thing that seems to separate them is the ability to go undetected, which is where the B-1 has an advantage. Also, the U.S. heavy missile carrier is one of the nation's only three strategic bombers, serving alongside the B-52 Stratofortress and the B-2 Spirit. As effective as this heavy bomber is, its counterpart, the B-52, is not ideal for low-level flights. Hence, this always has to be accompanied by smaller aircraft called penetrators. As the name suggests, they are built especially for long, low-level flights. As for the Russians, they have 15 Tupolev Tu-160s, which is just too much compared to America's three. As for NATO, these heavy bombers are reasons to be scared. NATO has also noticed the unveiling and is maintaining good spirits. A speaker at NATO once stated that Europe, and not America, was the real audience for Russia's nuclear antics. He went further saying that Russia's decision to start the production of the Tu-160 was a Kremlin tactic to scare Europeans. How much of this is true, no one knows, but time will tell. 
In conclusion, Russia is not backing down on strengthening its defenses with nuclear weapons, and as tensions continue in Ukraine, de-escalation is necessary. But do you think Russia purposely unveiled the supersonic bomber to scare NATO? Do you think the Ukraine invasion could ever lead to the use of such a large force of weapons? If you enjoy watching videos like this, then leave a like and ensure to subscribe to the channel Military Technology Updates. That way, you don't miss out on our next videos.